As you can hear, it's very echoey and reverb in here. Here's how the room sounds after treatment. Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Today is part two of our vocal booth build where we are building acoustic clouds, four inch broadband, two feet by four feet absorbers that are gonna be hanging from the ceiling. First, we're gonna start with our one by four by eight lumber, which we are marking out at 48 inches. These are gonna make up the long sides of these frames, these acoustic panel frames. So we're measuring the wood from both sides and just double checking that everything is lined up before we cut at 48 inches, which is four feet. And we're gonna prep all of those lengths first before we move on to the short sides, which are gonna be cut at 24 inches to make up the tops and bottoms of these acoustic cloud frames. So now we're measuring at 24 inches and we're just getting all of these cut. So each cloud frame requires two pieces at 48 inches, two pieces at 24 inches, and then one piece as the middle bracing, which is 24 inches minus the width of two of these pieces of one by four by eight lumber. You'll see I'll do a little demonstration here. There's the two pieces thick. So we're gonna count backwards from 24 inches by just under one and a half inches. Gets us right there. And we need just one of these pieces, one of these lengths for each cloud frame that we are building. So th that will make up the center brace. And once all of these are cut, we can go ahead and sand away all of the cut marks from all of these pieces. Now this is gonna make sure that when we stretch our upholstery around this frame, that there's no burrs or there's no splinters or anything that's gonna get caught on the fabric. And just to make sure that the upholstery goes smoothly and all the fabric lays nice and flat and aesthetically looks, looks uh, pleasing to the eye once people are, are looking up at the clouds inside the vocal booth or the mix position. <clears throat> So here is the nail gun that I'm using. It is a 16 gauge nail gun. I'm using two inch finishing nails. And here's the assembly of the frame. So I always sight down my boards and make sure that I identify what my front face of the frame is going to be. This is where you want the clearest wood, the wood with the least amount of knots, the least amount of irregularities or imperfections in the wood, because this is the side that will be facing everyone, uh, which the fabric will be, will be stretched upon. So you wanna make sure that one face, if there is any irregularities in the wood, that you point that, that irregularity to the rear of the panel, which will be against the ceiling, which won't be visible to the eye. So I do three nails, one in the center and then one left and right. And we do that on every single corner and on the braces as well. And the reason why I use these straight finishing nails rather than screws to make these frames is because you can adjust and twist these frames to be totally level and plumb and straight. If you build these frames with screws, it makes it way more rigid and way less adjustability. So you'll see once I get these, uh, these frames all nailed together, you'll see me sight down it and try to identify any twist or any sort of bend in the frame. And this, if it is twisted, will be visible to the naked eye, especially if you're mounting these clouds next to each other like we are. We want to make sure that these are very consistent and uh, consistent against each other as well so that they all line up perfectly. So there you can see me bending the frame just to get everything to lie straight. So once you have that frame straight, we can mark at 24 inches halfway down our long side of these frames. And this is where we are going to be mounting our brace. So we're gonna line up our brace with our mark at 24 inches and three nails with the nail gun to secure this in. And once that first side is secured, we can flip the panel over and then use our speed square or any other square you have available to make sure that the frame is square before we secure the other side of the bracing in. Because once we secure this side of the bracing, that's what's gonna make the frame rigid and it will keep its shape once it's all, once it's all mounted. So you can see I'm using the square there on both corners, just double checking and then securing in with the nail gun. And then just one final check uh, and then any more twisting if it needs it. And then we're gonna go ahead and get all the rest of these frames prepped. So there is what your finished cloud frames will look like. So these are ready for rear upholstery and then for the acoustic insulation. So here we are cutting for the rear upholstery. And this is very simple. This is just a, a poly cotton blend fabric, just a, ble a breathable fabric. And once we get it cut, 
we just staple this to the rear side of the panel frame, just like we did in our previous video of building the panels and upholstering the panels. We just staple that on, trim off the excess, and then we're ready to mount the acoustic installation inside, which you'll see here in a minute. So once your rear fabric is stapled on, this insulation is three inch thick rock wool safe and sound. And I like to lay it flat on the floor while my panel is upright like this so I can see where the middle bracing is because we have to trim some of this insulation out so that it sits flat against the bracing. If we don't do this step, then the center of the insulation can sag onto the fabric and it just looks, it does not look, look good once the, once the cloud frame is upholstered. So you can see here, I'm just adding in a few nails along the outside of the frame just to act as, as hooks to hold this acoustic insulation inside. Uh, that way, even if uh, over time the gravity pulling on it, it won't, it won't the insulation will not sag. You won't have a uh, sagging panel. So here is our front fabric. We're using a solid red velvet for this client and just laying that out flat on the floor before we place our prepped panel with our acoustic insulation and our rear upholstery on top. And we're just gonna make sure that everything is all centered before we start securing each corner. So the first things that are gonna get secured are all four corners. And this is easier with a four-way stretch fabric. You'll see the technique that we use here to get all of our sides to lay flat. So each corner, and sometimes I like to get a few staples on the short sides just to make sure that when I tension across the long side of the panel that there's enough fabric to tension across that short side once the long sides are done. So you can see just, just slight tension there to make sure everything lays flat, secure all corners. And then once all four corners are secure, I like to get one long side secured completely before I tension the opposite long side against that long side. So just getting a few on the short sides as well in the center before I go ahead and get this entire long side secured. And I like to use a pneumatic stapler, but when I started, I was just using a hand stapler, just T50 staples, and I use quarter inch staples. And just going ahead here and getting that long first long side all secured before I move on to the next side. And now you can see me tensioning that opposite side. I like to just use the weight of the panel. You don't have to pull very hard. And in fact, if you pull too hard, you can make the fabric see-through or you can, um, you can tear the fabric. Um, so I just like to use the weight of the panel itself to give enough tension so I know that the fabric is laying flat and there's no creases or wrinkles before I secure. So just securing this side before I move on to the short sides and the corners. So here's another time lapse here. You can see two long sides first then the short sides. And much like my previous video, the technique of stretching the fabric around the corners and laying it flat, the technique is the same. It's just a little bit harder on these frames since these frames are only one inch wide um, in comparison to the panel frames, which are two inches wide. There's a lot more wood surface area to staple on, on the panel frames in comparison to these cloud frames. So it just requires more time, more attention to detail, more finesse. Um, and I also like to angle my stapler a little bit onto the, the vertical side uh, to help the fabric lay flat. So there is a, an example of a finished cloud and looks really cool. The red and black co color combo, always a good, good combo in the studio. So here I am installing the hardware, which is just two and a quarter inch screw hooks. I am measuring in three inches from each side of the cloud frame and screwing in these screw hooks. This is what will connect it to the, the chain that we are using, and that will connect it to the screw hooks that we install into the drywall anchors into the ceiling here. So in this vocal booth, we are doing six clouds total, three on each side, centered to this central light. So right now, I'm just getting all of my measurements uh, to find my, where my first one is going to go. It's going to be centered in relation to this light. So I'm just getting all of my measurements, and you can't see here, but I'm using the laser level. Uh, just to make sure that all of my lines are consistent. And this is drywall, so the, we're just using standard drywall anchors, the same ones that we used in our previous videos, hammering them into the ceiling, screwing in our two and a quarter inch screw hooks, and then using our single jack chain right here. So I'm cutting these at six inches long, and it'll be four for every single cloud here. So once we have our chain and our screw hooks and our anchors installed, it is ready for installation of the cloud.
So here I'll show you a close-up shot of what it looks like with our, our anchor in, the drywall, our screw hook in, and our single jack chain installed. So each of these anchors is rated at 45 pounds, which is enough to hold these. So what I'm doing right here with the client, since this is velvet, the light hits it differently depending on what angle you're looking at. So I'm just holding it up for the client so he can see how he wants it to look before we install the first one. And once we install this first one, we're leveling off the height. Uh, I believe we ended up doing just two links of chain, about a two inch gap from the ceiling for these clouds for this client. And once we get this all level and looking uh, exactly how it needs to for this client's needs, then that is what we'll be leveling all of the rest of the five panels in this vocal booth to. So this first one is very important that we make sure that it is sitting how it needs to sit uh, before we get all the rest of them installed. So this is the tedious part with all of the micro adjustments. So what we do for macro adjustments, for larger adjustments, we can just change the link of the chain that, that the screw hook is on. And then for micro adjustments, we can either tighten the screw hook into the panel or tighten the screw hook into the ceiling, which gives us our more fine scale adjustment. So here our gaps just in between these screw hooks is only one inch because these panels are going to be touching each other uh, lengthwise. And then our marks for these are 18 inches wide, since our marks are three inches wide or three inches in from both sides of our 24 inch panel frame, and then 48 inches long, which is the length of our, of our clouds. So these dimensions may change depending on the sizing of cloud frames that you build for your studio. Um, but it's just very important that we keep this, all of these measurements and uh, very consistent across, across all of them, especially lengthwise like this. Uh, you'll see it's very important for the final product that all of our lines are are consistent with each other. Uh, this is why I suggest using a laser level uh, because sometimes there's irregularities in our room shape. Sometimes things, especially across long spans of distances, can be off by a quarter of an inch or, or longer or more. Um, there's some extreme cases we've ran into. Um, so it's always good to use a laser level and to level in relation to something visual within the room like this light um, because our eye is always going to be able to identify that, uh, that lack of of pattern or like the to notice we'll be able to notice something is off more than we can tell if it's actually level or straight uh, so i always i always level according to uh, some sort of visual cue within the room and in this case we have this central light so that's what we're installing all these panels in relation to so we have the first two up we're just getting the rest of the hardware mounted into the ceiling here um, and then once all of the hardware is up we will install the rest of these clouds. Now this one was giving us a little bit of trouble because it was close quarters between uh, the wall and the existing clouds that are, that are installed here. And we did have one anchor blow out on us. Um, so whenever that happens, you can either shim. I like to use my X-Acto knife and actually make shims with my pencil and hammer in a new anchor with the shims into the existing hole. And uh, that usually makes up for that's That's what worked in, in this case. So what we ended up doing was installing that side closer to the wall with a longer chain at first, just to give us more adjustability and more room for more wiggle room uh, to, to be able to get the adjustability uh, to match the existing cloud cloud height. So this one was a uh, this one was a bit of a pain, but we just keep at it, and we always find the solution, right? So a lot of this is working on the fly. A lot of every single studio is, is different. Every single room is different. You're always going to run into some sort of issue. It's never going to go as smoothly as you expect. But that is the beauty of construction, the beauty of studio building, and the beauty of music, right? Sometimes a lot of our best work comes from mistakes, right? So very, very cool. So here we're just getting this second last panel installed here and then our last one. And once again, for every single one of these, it's important that we, that we hold it up. If you're using a velvet or if you're using a fabric that looks different depending on how the light is hitting it, it's important that we Ideally, we only install this once. <laughs> we don't want to install this in the opposite direction. And then the client says, oh, this, this cloud is, is not visually consistent with the rest of the clouds. So now we're getting ready to do the control room, the mixed position clouds. 
And this is way easier to see us using the laser level here. So in this case, we're centering to these pot lights. These middle two pot lights are the center of the room. So that's what we are um, centering our clouds based off of. Once again, we do all of our centering visually uh, to make sure that we are not, um, there's not going to be any sort of weird visual um, inconsistency in terms of how the clouds are mounted. We want this to look very, very straight and in relation to the center of the room and to the center of the pot lights. So we got our rear, our six rear anchors installed, and now we're going forward by 48 inches to get our front anchors installed. And these front anchors are going to have longer chains to give us that angle where the mixed position clouds are angled lower, uh, closer to the vocal booth window, and will be closer to the ceiling as you, uh, towards the rear of the room. So you can see we're just measuring out 18 inches in between each anchor and six inches in between each cloud and just holding up the, the cloud so the client can see the orientation of the fabric before we hang all three of them, and then just swing them up to the ones in the rear. So once we get the angles uh, correct and consistent uh, between each cloud, I like to use wire tie. You can see I'm using the wire tie here, and I'm tying each screw hook that's on each panel frame, each cloud frame, to each other and twisting it taut with the pliers and snipping off the excess. This is going to make sure that these cloud frames sit together very, very closely, almost as one big unit, as one big four foot by six foot mixed position cloud. We like to do them still in two by four feet to keep them modular. We do do custom sizes if that's what the client wants. But in this case, this client wanted to keep everything modular just so that in the future, if they do move to a different studio, they can take all of this down and they can create uh, their their mixed position cloud again, or they since they have more clouds in the vocal booth, they can make an even larger cloud, or they can orient these however they want to. So here is a shot of the finished vocal booth with our staggered six foot panels in the black crushed velvet, all of our two by four foot ceiling clouds. Very cool. This is the final part of this two part series for this build for this commercial video or for this commercial studio. Very cool. Really great result. Uh, both the client and I are very happy with how this room sounds and how it looks. Very cool that we get to do custom work for all of our jobs. And the studio is such an intimate place. It's it's a place where people need to feel comfortable and they, they need to feel ha happy making music in their in their own space, right? So we like we pride ourselves in making every single job custom uh, and built to suit the needs of our clients. So here is a shot of the control room with those uh, those cool mixed position clouds in the red velvet, the red solid velvet. Very cool. This job was a lot of fun. Here's another shot. You can see that the light hits these clouds differently from this angle. And thank you so much for watching. This is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Please leave a comment, like, share, subscribe. See you next time. Peace out.